This is Stephanie from statisticshowto.com. In this video I'll be showing you what an alpha level is. The alpha level is directly related to a null hypothesis. So if you aren't familiar with a null hypothesis, you may want to check out my previous video on the null hypothesis. You'll probably see the alpha level written like this, alpha of 0.05. You might also see an alpha level of 0.01 and sometimes 0 0.10. So what do these mean? Well, alpha level of 0 0.05 is 5%, point 0.1 is 1%, and point 0.10 is 10%. But 5% of what or 10% of what? The answer has to do with something called a type 1 error and a type to error. This is an image of Goldilocks in a mock trial from the University of Texas. Now the null hypothesis in a courtroom is that the suspect is innocent. So Goldilocks right here is innocent. That is the null. So the alternate hypothesis is that Goldilocks is guilty. So Goldilocks is innocent, but if you reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis, if you make that kind of error, this is a type 1 error if you incorrectly reject the null. A type 2 error would be just the opposite. If Goldilocks was guilty, but you let her walk free, that would be a type 2. I'm going to concentrate on the type 1 error right now, incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. That's because an alpha level is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. Here's an image of a bell curve. Over to the right, this tiny area here, is our alpha level. So this is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. This is 5%, which is fairly large in the grand scheme of things. So why not make this as tiny as possible? Why not reduce this alpha level to something pretty insignificant like 0.001%? The problem is the smaller the alpha level, the smaller the area where you would reject the null hypothesis. So if you have this tiny area, there's more of a chance that you will not reject the null hypothesis. Even if it is false. And this would be what you call a type 2 error. Or beta. In other words, the more you try and avoid a type 1 error by making the alpha level really small, the more likely a type 2 error could creep in. So the reason you see an alpha level of 5% used most commonly is because people have figured out an alpha level of 5% is a good balance between the two issues. In my next video, I'll show you how to calculate an alpha level. Check us out at statisticshowto.com for more articles and videos on everything elementary statistics.